let's talk a little bit about these percussion tracks here. You know, a lot, a lot of program drums these days have a bunch of percussion tracks. Uh, this time we have, let me go to the chorus here, about four different ones. The right, hey, there was another one here, and okay, there's one more trap new. Let me play that for a moment. Okay, well, mm. this is actually a fun one. Let's let's try turning off these for more. Let's go only for that little extra drum kit drum. I love it because the, these kind of little drums, they give the song flavor. I mean, like you know, everybody has a kick and snare, but this. It's kind of a little, kind of a little bit of a, you hear that? That's kind of like a stylistic kind of choice that helps us place the song in a specific, you know, area in this case, Barbados. <laughs> but um, the same thing here, uh, drum, you see, you know, there's, a, there's one of these uh, uh, EQs that's actually flat. Why is it flat? Well. Not everything needs to be EQ'd just because we can, um, but the EQ should be there in case I want it. So this one was just flat, I could turn it off or I could just leave it, which is what I'm gonna do. And that trim is also at zero. So um, call these facilities, call these possibilities to tweak stuff, but that doesn't mean we have to use them. But there's some a couple of other cool things on this track. One, again, cleaning up the low end with, the, with that same filter because there was something in there that I didn't like just left leave that but then also I thought turn this off for more on the descent and also this plug in here and you see how it's kind of dry yeah in the program world everything naturally is dry unless there's some kind of effect on the drums already printed which we don't always use but I think Part of my philosophy is to move parts back and forwards in the spectrum a little bit, like create ambience from, from spaces where they are not yet. You know, like you always want to say, I want the kick in the front and the snare in the front. And you know, this extra sound, uh, I actually don't know what it's called, sorry. I'm sure that somebody would know exactly what it's called. Um, this extra drum could step back, be a second roll but at the same time open up the record to from the front to the back a little bit so that we're not just listening to something that's just all the way in front of us because that's not actually even though that's interesting as an engineer hey i can get everything in your face um, musically speaking that's actually not that interesting that's just kind of like somebody pushing their face against a glass and like uh, looking like this the whole time that's not fun it stresses you out after a while too so I'm look, looking for a little bit of like, can I just add a little bit of space somewhere? And I, know, I remember doing this, first thing I wanted to do, saying like, you know, I hear a little bit in that, a little tail in that drum that I think I can, you know, squeeze out a little bit. And first, uh, first for that would be a compressor with a short release would actually bring that up. But I thought, you know, let's, let's give it a little grit, get that ambience that natural ambience by itself a little bit out of there, but also, you know, give it a little bit grit. And uh, one of the best plugins to do that is the uh, Tantoys De Devil Lock, which is made after um, a unit, the Sure Level Lock. It was the original unit, and they made it the Devil Lock, which is pretty cool, actually. And it's uh, it crunches. It actually even says crunch on there. It crunches and crushes, and it's not subtle. And it does uh, a really cool thing on ambiences if they are already in the drum somewhere, but just maybe too loud. So, so check this out. Without, it's always kind of dry and kind of has no, no grit to it. And then it stopped, of course. And with it, it has just a little bit more of a, of a real world feeling. Actually, there's a word for that that some, uh, and some engineers used over time. I really like that. It's called worldizing, which is something, it's the equivalent of if you take a sound and you record it through a guitar amp in a studio, all of a sudden you add it, world to it, the sound of a real space around it. Or you do the, press it through some kind of like a speaker, a small speaker, an amp, a telephone. These are things that like, 
take something that's kind of plasticky and put it into a, uh, into a place that's kind of real. And that's uh, the, world, uh, the word for that is worldizing. And I think that this does it actually. This is the kind of idea, like a little gritty. It's not pretty. It's not fully distorted. I can do that too, of course. There was sound like. <laughs> like this somewhere I could do that and if I really wanted that for to have much a much louder role a much more interesting like forward role I could do that but that was not the idea here the idea was to give it a little bit of space around it I'm probably not able to get it exactly back back to where it was but you get the idea right only downfall on the sound toys devilock is it doesn't have an output control it has a mix control but that changes the level I don't like that Hello, sound toys. Let's update that. Okay, I said that. Um, so that was the one step. But then I still fail, felt, you know, one step further, you know, like give me a little bit more. We want to feel like somebody took this drum out of a uh, drum computer and somehow took it in their hand and walked into a studio and banged on it. And um, I think what, what does that is this guy here, the SPX 990. Um, let me see if I can... How, how much of it you used it. Try. It's not much, but I'm going to push it a little further and then I'm going to show you what it does and why I like it. So you get, let me just make it really, really loud so you hear what the sound actually is. You see that kind of sound? It sounds, to me, it sounds like a real room. Um, like not just an extra effect, there's just this, this space around the sound. And what I can do here, actually, and I'm going to do that probably from the board. No, I'm not going to show you something. The cool part is of my my uh, my sources are um, they routed through those subgroups that we talked about. In this case, would be the drum subgroup, right? So let me show you that one for more. If I turn the drum subgroup off, the effect actually doesn't go there; it goes around it, which is a really cool little tool that you could do on, on consoles pretty easily by taking the original signal out of the, um, out of the stereo bus. So you can listen to only the effect. And it sounds like this. So with it, with the uh, real life, uh, sorry, with the real track, there you go, without. I hear only the, the effect, which is really cool because you can EQ it and go like, what is actually this processor doing to my, to my sound? It's also a very teachable moment because you can experiment with that or like compare effects just by the effect and not just with the um, with a dry signal into it so but what, what's what I wanted to show you with this which is kind of cool is this I have two SPX 990s and they're actually set up in a configuration where they're true stereo true stereo means I can pan into it and it's beautiful because I can pan the sound into the reverb and the reverb will follow which means I will get more space because I'm not putting, for instance, reverb or something that's on the left and the reverb appears in the middle where it clutters your vocal up. And it sounds like this. Let me see the pan over here. You see the actual reverb only is following that. It's pretty cool. Now, having said all that, of course, <laughs> this sound is in the middle. So it doesn't matter on this particular sound. But it's nice to have if you have a chance to set up a stereo, or true stereo reverb. Um, one choice would be the SAR, soft tube SAR reverb, is, I think, true stereo. Or you could do it with two mono reverbs that you pan and have two cents to. Uh, that works too. But it's, it's, it's nice. And you would say, well, do I really need that? Well, I don't know, but let's go back to that section of why do people hire you? Because your way to look at a record is a specific one. And this is part of my specific way of looking at a record. Now, I can't sell that to anybody. They're not going to care about that. But this is part of the way I make records. And my clients seem to like that. <laughs> and you see also this drum is obviously 7 dB lower. So I actually didn't want it the way they wanted it. So I wanted it much softer. OK, that was with the loud reaver. We probably only had it down here. But let me show you again this um, how this worked without the effects on it and then with just to see that tell you that this actually makes sense this is without sorry, just that one kind of dry kind of a little not that interesting you know just add a little bit of the space 
and uh, have a sound now that feels like it was recorded somewhere. Um, and the combination of these small changes actually make the sound of your record.